Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a command and control server using Python. You can use this as a RAT, as a remote access Trojan, or for whatever you want. But do know that this is for educational purposes and Python is not good for writing malware anyway. So as you can see here, I have a server made using Flask. Uh, and if I go to slash bots, here's a list of all the victims which have been connected. So if I run the victim script, as you can see, my uh, PC just showed up here. This is my PC username, a uh, unique ID, and my IP. And we can send any command we want. For example, saying shut down, we can send that. And you can see that it has been received by the, uh, uh, by the victim. So we can make it do whatever we want. Uh, so let's get right into it. So as you can see, I have a basic Flask setup over here. If you don't know how Flask works, I have a tutorial for that as well, but you don't need to understand uh, per se anything too much. You can just follow along. Um, so let's first make a uh, endpoint for the victim to connect to. So slash connect, this is where the victim will connect to. There was a post request. So let's make the methods post. And uh, this will be a continuous data stream. So we will keep on sending data and when a command is, uh, is sent, we will send the command and then we'll keep on sending the uh, false data. So how this will work is first, let's just get the data. So request dot get JSON. Make sure you have imported from Flask request and also response as well. These are important. So let's create the client. So let's create a client object client class. So class client, which will only get the argument of data. So self.data is data. And now let's make a clients list as well, which will be empty. So client will be equal to a new client with the data passed, and we will add this to the client list. So now we need a function which will continuously keep on sending data. So how this this is how it will look. We will just keep on sending null. And in case we do get a command, how this will work is we will have in our cl client uh, class we will have a uh, a variable called new command, which will be false. And if this is anything other than false, it means that this is a command. So if client dot new command is false, then we just send null. And if it is different than false or else, we will send the client.new command. And then we will set it to be false because otherwise it will keep on sending the same command over and over again. So after we have done this, we have to send the response and create the response. So make sure you have imported response from Flask. And now we will have a response variable with the generate function and the data type will be text slash plane. So now let's have it on at response dot call on close function, which will run when the connection is closed. So close connection and it will just remove the client from the list. So clients dot remove client. This is called when the client should disconnect. So now we have to return the response and this is it. So we have created our um, connect function. Now we have to make a way for us to view and send commands to these cl connected clients. So how we will do that is we will have a basic uh, HTML page. I'm not good at HTML. If you want to customize it, you can. I'll just make it as simple as possible. So we will have, let's say an at app.root slash clients. We will just call this, let's say, view the clients, view clients. And it will just return a basic string, which will be HTML. So for this, we will simply have uh, to create our basic HTML structure. So we have the HTML tag, the head tag. Let's just set a type as well then the body uh, here let's just put an h1 tag 
and a break. And so how this will work is we will do a for loop here. For each client, we will be adding a uh, div. So that's kind of like a box containing, uh, you know, a text box and a button to say command. So let's just uh, stop the string here. Like this. And here we will put plus. And here, let's just say slash n dot join. But I think we need to put this up here. This so dot join, and in the uh, parentheses here, um, we will have to create a separate function called client template, let's say, which will get the argument client for client in clients. So basically, this will simply add whatever the client template function returns for every single client in our clients list. Now we're going to make the client template function, which will return an HTML string, so HTML code for every single client. So make sure to put an F in front of your string so we can use variables. First, we'll create the div, which is basically like a box, which will contain all of our information. So in H1, we will have our client uh, username. So in curly brackets, put client.data username and then close each one tag. This is why we need the F in front of the string. So we can use these curly brackets to make variables. Then in H5, let's just make the um, unique ID. So client.data ID. And also in H5, we can make the IP. So IP ip two dots and then curly brackets ground data ip and then close the h5 and here we can also put id like this so now that we have finished this part we will make a label for the command so label for command Um, now an input box for text, so type will be text, uh, and the ID will be important since we will use the ID to get the command. So the ID will be command, and then in curly brackets we will use the ID, so data ID, and then just put a slash here to close it. So now we will make a button to send the command. So button on click. It will take us to uh, another URL, which we will create later. But for now, it will be location.href. And here we'll put equals. And then in these uh, little apostrophes, slash client command. And a, qu a question mark, since the question mark is for passing arguments. We will need to pass two arguments. The first one. Uh, is the client ID. So client ID equals, and then in the curly brackets, client.data ID. And the second one is the, so we'll put an and sign like this, shift and seven uh, for another argument, which will be the command. So command equals, here put a plus sign outside the apostrophe, make sure. Uh, here we have to get the um, text in the input box. So document dot get element by ID. Uh, and here as an argument, make sure in apostrophes because it's a string. We will pass command curly brackets client dot data ID. So now that we have this, oh, and um, I almost forgot we have to put dot value here to actually get the value from the text box. Let me just put an enter here so that we can see better. So button on click, click is location.href. And here is a string, which is the client ID and command and then equals. And we add to the string the get element by ID of our, of this. So the command client data ID and we get it, we extract its value. 
Now we need to make the endpoint for sending the command. So this slash client command here, which we have, which will take two arguments, client ID and command. So we will create another at app.route slash client command def send command. It will have two arguments. So the ID, which will be an int and request.args.get client ID. Then the command, which will be request.args.get command. Now for each client in clients, if client.data ID is equal to our ID, we found our client, so client.new command equals command and break. Then make sure to return something. We will return a redirect. So make sure to import redirect back to our slash clients. So now that we have this, all that is left is to make the actual client code, which is extremely simple. So don't worry about it. All you need to do is import requests as first, daytime as well, and threading and OS. Requests and daytime need to be installed using pip. So after we have done this, let's initialize some variables. So our ID will be datetime.now.timestamp. And make sure it's an int because it will have other decimal values as well. So this is an int, then our IP, which we will use an API to get. So requests.get HTTPS uh, API ipfi.org i'm pretty sure it was called and dot text to make sure to get the text of the result which is our ip uh now we need our um, username as well so username is os.get login after we have all this data we can just make a data variable which is a dictionary containing our ip id and username Now we need a function to listen for the time for commands. So response will be equal to requests.post. Here we will need a variable for our connection URL. So con URL, let's just leave it as blank for now. So we will connect to, we will send a request to con URL with JSON data being data and stream being true. And here we will iter all the lines. So for line in response.iter lines, if we have a line, we will decode it just to make sure. And then if the line does not start with null, so if line dot starts with null equals false, then we can send the command. So cmd receive, let's just say and pass in the uh, line as an argument. So let's make this function, def cmd receive, and just print the command for now. For here, you can make whatever you want. You can make it if command equals shutdown, you can do os.system shutdown or whatever you want. So, uh, but also make sure to print it so that we can test. So here we actually now have to call the function. So we will thread it. So t equals thread target will be listen. Make sure to not call it. So don't put the brackets, the parentheses, and then t dot start. So now to get the connection URL, just run your server using Python. And wherever you are running it in the output, it should print the address. So just copy that, paste it here, make sure to put slash connect, then open up your clan dot, uh, your uh, folder. So I'll just right click here, reveal in file explorer and open CMD and run pi or Python. If that doesn't work, client.py. So now this has connected. If we go here, we can see that we got a post request to connect. So to view the clients, we just open up a, a whatever browser you want and go to our address slash clients. So here, as you can see, we have a list of all the clients with my username, ID, IP, and the command uh, input box. So 
just open these side by side to just send the command. So let's just say test, submit, and we got test. And it also printed out no for some reason. So to fix the issue, just put in line equals line two dots minus four, and it should just print out normally without the null at the end. So now to make it automatically refresh, we can add some JavaScript code in our HTML here to just automatically refresh the page when it uh, spots that a new client has connected. So to do this, we will have a another endpoint, which will simply return our le length of the client. So client, just call it client's len or something. So def client's len, and it will simply return the uh, length of clients like this. Okay, so since I really dislike JavaScript, I couldn't get this to work. So I just uh, found a uh, an answer on Stack Overflow, which helped me. So you can also just copy paste this code from me, or you can just write it now. Uh, the link is in the description to the GitHub. Uh, so basically what it does, it uh, just gets the last length, remembers it. So here it sets the last length and then it this runs every, I think, uh, six seconds, five or six seconds. It uh, just goes to the client's len. So slash client's len, make sure it returns a string, otherwise you will get an error. Uh, and it goes there, it sees if it is different than the last len. If it is, uh, if it is different, then it reloads since something changed with the clients. Okay, I have found another issue. So this close connection function does not get called for some reason when the client disconnects. So to fix this, I just came up with a quick uh, solution. Just add here a self dot is a live variable for the client, which will be true. And in the while loop here, it will always be true. So is a live equals true, it keeps getting set to true. But we will have another function here, which will run in a separate thread. So check clients. And it will simply be a while loop, which will keep checking the client. So for a client in clients, if client dot is alive equals false, then we remove it. Clients dot remove client, and else then we set client dot is alive false. So how this works basically is that if we uh, set this to false and the client disconnected, this code won't run anymore since the client disconnected. So it will remain false and it won't get set to true. Uh, if the client is still connected, this will get set to false, but it will immediately be set back to true here. We can also import uh, time. So from time, import sleep to just sleep here like a bit. So sleep, maybe like three seconds. And here, just say T, uh, we need to import threading. I forgot. So at the top here, from threading, import thread. And here, just make a separate thread. So t equals thread. Target will be check clients. T dot start. So now, if we run this, uh, open up the CMD. So CMD pi client dot pi. And then, if you go here and refresh, it has connected. We can send commands as many as we want. And if we close this. Our client should disconnect in a couple of seconds. Um, yeah, as you can see, it works. It takes a bit since we have the sleep here, three seconds. It also updates every like five, six seconds. So it can take up for up to nine seconds for it to update. Um, but yeah, so this is the basics of it, if it works. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, I also made a version of this code for the client, not for the server, in C++, which is a lot better since it's uh, like almost impossible to detect, it's easier to spread and all of that. So I might make a tutorial on that soon as well, like writing this code, but in C++, trust me, it's much, much more complicated. Um, so yeah, stay tuned and see you next time.